Okay, so we're going to do a vacutainer uh, blood draw from the antiquitable space right now. Um, you're always going to want to start with sanitizing your hands. Oops, sorry, arm. And if you're going to come, if you're doing this in real life, you'd ask the patient to spell her name. You don't want them to just say their name, you want to ask them to spell her name. And ask them their birth date, ask them uh, if they have a pref preference for her arm. And then you want to look for like anything that you uh, want to avoid, like scar tissue, any rashes, injuries. You don't want to draw from uh, a site that has that. So you're going to start with tying your uh, tourniquet. I'm not going to tie actually have this tied during the demonstration because these sometimes won't flow if it's tied, but I'll show you right here. Um, rim, you cross it, and then on the top one, you pull it up and over and then you pinch it with your other hand. Then you take that little bunny ear and you tuck it under. Uh, and you're gonna wanna ask if it's painful because sometimes that can hurt the patient a bit, but I'm just gonna put it like that. So it can sometimes help if you close your eyes and look away, uh, but if you want to, you can also look. You're gonna to wanna to gently pat across the arm so you can find your veins. Hi, Fancy. Uh, and you're gonna also look at the direction of your vein here. So once you have it, you can tie the tourniquet, assemble your equipment. You're going to want to clean off the site with your alcohol, alcohol pad. Now it's really important to, you know what, I didn't actually look for a landmark. Always look for a landmark when you find a spot so you remember what you're doing, where, what, uh, where you're going, what direction. So I think I'm gonna go in right here and it's just that direction right there. If I were to choose this vein, I would have to go in this direction. Um, yeah, so once you have your site cleaned uh, in a spiral pattern or concentric circles, uh, you don't want to touch the site. If you have to touch it again, if you feel like you lost your landmark, that's okay. What you can do is have another uh, alcohol pad, tap it with your finger, and then you can feel it like that. And then while your patient is drying, remember the tourniquet is off at this point, um, you're going to want to assemble your materials. I like to take a piece of tape and tear it off and put it on my tray before I do anything else, like before I actually do the draw, so it's just there and ready. You don't have to do that. Um, you're gonna wanna get your needle and your vacutainer holder ready. These are two different types of needles. One has a safety, one doesn't. And then here's two different types of holders. One has a safety, one doesn't. One of your, your holder or your needle needs to have a safety device, so. My needle has a safety device. I'm going to choose a holder that doesn't. And that is going to look like this. That's the inside. There's a needle in there. When you push your tube onto the needle, once it's in the tube or into the holder, that rubber part will be pushed back and the needle will puncture your, puncture your vacutainer and let the blood in. So you screw that in. I'm going to put that down. If I were to use this guy, same thing, pull that end off, screw it on, and then you have your little safety device right there. But I'm not going to use that, so I'm going to go put this somewhere where it's safe. Uh, I like to also get my, oh heck, where's my trash? Um, my tubes in order. Uh, I'll post another video about that, a good way to remember uh, your tube order. I remember it using like a visual portrait that I'll show you, but you can also come up with acronyms and stuff. So I'm going to want to draw blue first, and then I'm going to draw purple. All right, so I'm going to check with the patient to make sure that the uh, site is dry. You don't want to uh, take, the, take a blood sample when there's still uh, alcohol drying because A, it's going to hurt your patient, it'll sting. Um, and then B, if it gets into your sample, that can alter the test results either by, uh, you know, altering some chemicals that are in the blood or damaging the cells that are actually in the blood. 
ask your patients if they want a warning. If they do, you can count down from three. If they don't, uh, you can go ahead and just do it gently. At this point, if, the, if you're having a hard time getting into a vein, you can have them steadily squeeze that ball. You don't want them to pump because that can alter the test results. When you anchor your vein, you want to go about an inch or so below your site and you're going to want to press down and pull back. So down and back because that's going to stop your vein from rolling. It can kind of straighten it out for you. All right. And then when you hold your, uh, your needle, you want to make sure that the bevel is pointing upwards. So I don't know if you can kind of see that, but that's the bevel. It's pointing up and you're going to go in at an angle of 30 degrees. It's a little hard to, you know, get a good sight for what that 30 degrees in this position. So a good rule of thumb is to just like be flat enough so you're not going to go just right past the vein, but don't be too flat so that you're just like going into the actual dermis and not uh, past it into the vein. And don't wave your needle or arms like I am. <laughs> uh, all right. And don't do what I'm about to, to do. Don't touch the site after you've uh, cleaned it. So once you got it there, you want to go straight in gently like that. You don't want to hesitantly like poke it at all because that can either nick the vein um, and cause your patient to bleed when they don't need to or you're going to contaminate your needle with bacteria from the skin and that can get into your sample. Once you're in, you wanna hold this hand really steady and use your other hands to grab your tubes and then uh, touch, uh, hold the back of your tube and then one finger or two fingers on the flange here and use that to press your tube into your holder uh, without jostling the holder because you don't want that needle to move. That needle is very sharp it can actually cut tissue. Uh, I like to kind of turn the tube a little bit. Sometimes that helps uh, all the blood actually go into your tube. So you're going to know when you have enough blood when the blood stops flowing into the tube. Um, it's called a vacutainer tube because there is a vacuum inside of it. And when that vacuum is broken by that needle that's inside of your holder, uh, it pulls in the blood and it will only pull in as much blood as, as is needed for this type of tube or whatever type of tube you're using. Um, when your last tube is halfway done, you undo your tourniquet, pull out the tube, and then you're gonna wanna grab some gauze, shield the patient like this, do not press down on the needle, pull out in a smooth motion and then press down and activate your safety device pointing away from yourself and the patient. Once that needle is out, your first job is to put the safety on because this is dangerous. You're going to want to dispose of that in the sharps right away. Ask your patient to hold that. And then while they're uh, holding it and putting on pressure, you can check in, on the, check in on them, ask them how they're doing, how they're feeling, if they're feeling light head, lightheaded. And you're going to want to gently invert your tubes about eight times. Don't shake them because that can uh, break up the cells in your tube. Um, just gently invert it. And then you're going to label your tubes. Don't label before the draw, label afterwards because if the tube, uh, if, there, if the tube's like bad and there's no uh, vacuum in there so you don't get any blood in it or if you have to stop in the middle of the draw for some reason, uh, you know, you have to throw your tube away for whatever reason and there's a label on that. Um, if you have a pre-printed label, you're only going to have a certain number of pre-printed labels for that patient. Uh, and if you have to throw like a tube away that's already been labeled, you might run out of labels and that's a problem. So this is when you label the, the tube. You're gonna ask the patient, can you confirm? Is this you? Always confirm. And then you're going to go and put this uh, either, you might be doing testing like right there uh, in a lab at your clinic, or you might be sending it off to um, a different lab, and then you're gonna to wanna to put it in a biohazard bag with the lab requisition. I'm just gonna put these right here. And then, uh, but do that after this part. So now, you fold your little gauze into a little bit like that, and then you take the gauze from the patient, and then you switch it. And you can check the site out a little bit as you're doing this. And then you put your tape or your coban tape on here. 
Um, you're going to want to instruct your patients to not uh, lift anything heavy for the next couple of minutes. Uh, I think technically you're not supposed to lift anything heavy for a while, but it's it usually isn't like a big deal for most patients. Um, tell them to leave the bandage on for about 10-15 minutes. Uh, if the site doesn't stop bleeding, call the office. Uh, they can try applying pressure for, I think it's like five minutes. Don't, don't quote me on that. Uh, but if after applying pressure that like they're still bleeding, the patient needs to call the clinic and then throw this away. You don't reuse this with patients. All right. I think that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment, email me, say hi to me in class. All right.